Hey, what's up guys? So, welcome to this video. Um, so today what we're going to be doing is another dash harness. Go figure. <laughs> but, uh, so this one, uh, the customer already attempted to do the dash swap himself. Wired up everything himself. Um, and, uh, he had some issues. Uh, I think he couldn't get it start. Shit wasn't working and everything. And finally he just gave up and said, hey man. I bit off more than I could chew. Help me. <laughs> so, uh, that's why I do what I do. So, um, basically, I'm gonna have to strip off some of his junk. You know, undo his, undo his column helper. Uh, this truck is a '99, I believe. Um, it does have the cluster helper. Um, so we're gonna fix that wiring because the pigtail's a little long, and he got a bunch, bunch of extra stuff. So. Uh, we're gonna double check all his wiring. I'm probably gonna have to cut off everything that he did and redo it. Um, I can just, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It, it's not looking too hot down there. So, um, and then I, I'm gonna think I'm gonna hook up his ox fitter switches too. Um, he did send me, so he sent me the old harness and the new harness and the column helper and and his fuse box so that I can cut it up and get that mounted too. And then so he can mount his fuse box in his truck cause his fuse box was dangling too. He's like, I don't even know how to mount this up, man. So, uh, you know, he sent me some pictures that look pretty rough and he's just like, man, I quit, help me. <laughs> so, um, he sent me this big old box and he sent me the 08 harness in case I need anything like the headlight switch pigtail and the dimmer one. So, um, Usually when I build guys' dash harnesses, if you can afford to have the truck down for a little while, um, I do need the new harness and the old harness. Now for guys that are still driving their trucks and can't afford to have it down you know, for a little while, while you get the dash built, totally understandable. You know, you use your truck for work. So what I do is I track down a donor harness like this one sitting here so that I can build the dash harness while you're still driving your truck. And then uh, if you do do that option, um, I do need the code, the part number in the code off of this harness. So with this harness, looking at the part number, I see that one C3T, so I know that's a 2001. And then you see the PAA, that tells me what, part, what this harness is. So I need a one in that part number and I need a PAA to match that exact harness that is exactly on his truck. So you don't want to be mismatched, mix matching harnesses or, you know, it wouldn't be horrible to wire up the whole dash with the wrong harness. So I can't stress that enough. Okay. So, uh, other than that, where I'm going to get started, like how I always do, I like to start from the passenger side and work my way to the driver's side. Um, it's all pretty easy until you get about right here. So right here is where it starts getting a little funky because you got all the bells and whistles on the driver's side. So other than that, let me get started. Um, let me try to clean up a little bit what he did and undo everything. Um, other than that, uh, oh, my very first step though is we gotta mount the hardware. That, that's always our first step when doing dash, when you're building your dash swap is make sure you get all your stuff mounted. I'm talking the fuse box, the column, the column helper. You know, uh, these aux switches. Um, I like to run the new fuel cutoff switch. So make sure you get all your hardware mounted first. That is your first step before you start wiring. So that's gonna be my first step. So let me go ahead and get all that stuff mounted and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, so we got all our hardware mounted. So this being a pretty basic dash, you know, we got our fuel cutoff there. Uh, we got our oh, 9901 fuse box mounted. And then we got the column helper with my headlight little relay pack. And then we got the column on there. So that's pretty much all the hardware that we need for this dash. Um, other than that, I'm gonna start going through and cleaning up his wiring. Uh, I'm gonna start undoing a lot of his tape. I can tell he's got some Harbor Freight tape on there. And then probably undo all these millions of zip ties. So uh, start cleaning it up. And then uh, we're gonna start stripping it down now. On the passenger side of the harness, on the 9901s, uh, they have this little headlight uh, relay pack for the fogs. Um, it's just a couple wires. It's really not that much to it. But basically, our headlight 
our headlight relay packs does the same thing. So basically we can delete this whole, this all this wiring right here out of the harness. So I'll undo all these and they can run all the way through here, all the way to over here. So it can really cut down on this harness being so bulky if we could just delete this. Cause basically all the wiring for that just runs through here and then it flips the U-turn and then comes right back. So we can just bypass all that, keep it all over here. So other than that, I'm gonna get busy on cleaning this bad boy up and then we're gonna start building it, starting over here. So heck yeah. Okay guys, so we got all the cluster helper wires um, all cleaned up and cut to a good length. Um, and now I'm just gonna pop a couple zip ties on here and then uh, run some tape on it. But that's pretty much it. Uh, then we'll feed it on up over here, but I do feed it through this hole. So I don't have it. I don't make it come over here and do some weird stuff. So, yep. All right. So let me get this all zip tied. And then, I mean, we're pretty much to about right here on the dash and we get to start the fun stuff now. So again, gang. All right, guys. So we got the pigtail all taped up for the cluster helper. Plenty of room for it to reach up here and stuff sitting right in the middle. So uh, when I pull the whole harness off, I'm going to get all the tape in here. I'm not going to try to fight to fit it in here. So <clears throat> I'll leave most of this tape in for when I pull pull the harness off the dash. But um, right here, um, I added this plug uh, for the cluster helper wires. So you got your transmission wire right here. And then you got the three boost wires. And then you got the four for the gear selector that go to the uh, PCM. So basically, he can run these through the body and and then be able to hook it up on the dash after he installs the dash, basically adding an additional body plug. So other than that, cluster helper's done. So we're pretty much the right here on this harness. So this is where some of the fun's gonna begin. I'll probably start by taking some of this tape off, get these looms off. Um, so that's like for the headlight switch. And then uh, probably get the fuse box mounted with these bad boys. So. Let me, let me get these wires situated and start getting it ready and uh, show you what it looks like here in a little bit. All right, guys, check out the progress so far. So um, we went ahead, got our stuff in on our fuse box and gem module. Um, we got the wires coming up this way. We got them all running to the column helper and my little headlight relay pack. Looks pretty sweet. So um, we got the plug right here for the new headlight switch. Um, this one's going to go to the dimmer and then it's parking brake right here. And now for the cluster helper, it does have additional wires that run, uh, for the transmission temp, the boost, and then the gear selector. So there's eight wires total that you have to run through the engine bay. So what I do is I put them on a plug right here so that we can run the other end of this pigtail through the body and basically be able to wired up without the dash and then you put the dash in and you just plug this in so i have that pigtail right here so boom right here so this is what i have so i can look at this and know this goes to the boost gauge this white one goes to the trans temp and then this one goes to the gear selector and this will basically be running on the body of the truck and then after he gets it wired in you just plug it in right here technically boom so boom, now he has a plug to run this through the engine bay. So pretty cool. Column helper looking good. Still got a little bit of a rat's nest right here that we're working on. So right now what we're gonna start working on, uh, all we got left is to wire up the new column. So we're gonna wire up the multi-switch, the ignition, the tow haul, the shift interlock, and the, the clock spring and like that. So um, I went ahead, uh, all his pigtails were cut pretty short. Luckily he did give me the harness, so I was able to go through there and get all the right color wires and extend them all. So now we got more than a long enough pigtails for the column. The next step is the pigtail for the column helper. Um, he ripped off all the stickers on these two, so what it is, I just pulled the cap off. And on the instructions, boom, look, you can shoot down the list. You got the AU1, A2, A3. So, you know, if we grab A4, it should be purple. Now, let's see. Yeah, right there. Here, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. Yeah, you see the A4, it's purple. And then that one next to it right there is white, so that should be A3. 
a three white. Yeah, so I'm just gonna shoot down this list so I can confirm what wire needs to go exactly where by not using the stickers because yeah, so at least I know those wires will be going to the correct pins. Right, Mr. Axel? I know, you're helping me. I couldn't do this without you. All right, guys, check it out. So, um, basically, we got the pigtails all for the column, all taped up, ready to go, and going into our column helper plug. And then right here, these are wires that we need to finish splicing into the harness. So, not that much. It looks like about a dozen. And uh, those are going to go to pretty much all these random wires that are chilling here. So, those will be cutting and splicing like for the horn, uh, shift interlock, overdrive, stuff like that. So, heck yeah, this thing's coming along. So, let me get this bad boy up in the, up in here, and then uh, we'll finish running these wires. Heck yeah. All right guys, so I think I pretty much got it all done. Um, got everything wired up on here. So, let me give you a quick overview of the whole thing. So started with the passenger side um all i did right here was just tape up the wires and make them look pretty and they got it wired to the new uh inertial little fuel switch they got it coming up here you know i got them in the all in the little holes where the things mount and then right here this is the power lead for his uh upfitter switches so he's going to be running the fuse box on the uh behind the glove box so he's just going to tap these into that this is for the hvac we got our new uh, passenger airbag pigtail. We got a ground right here. And then uh, we got our other two grounds right here. And then we mounted our upfitter relays right here. And then I didn't really mess with any of the center stuff. Uh, that's all just stock stuff. And then you got your body plugs right here for all this. I didn't really have to do anything there, but clean it up. And then same coming down here. Now we got our uh, cluster helper pigtail ready to party and then coming over here this is where the rat's nest was and i'd say it looks a lot better a couple zip ties really helped it and now we got our fuse box here that i mounted um and then what i do is i take the plug covers off and route the wires this way because normally they go the other way and i need them to go this way then you got your gem that plugs in right there and then coming over here to the column helper got that all wired in looks pretty good I, I think it looks great and then this little wire right here is for the parking brake and then these two right here are for the dimmer and the headlight switch and then this plug right here that i added this is one of my plugs this is going to be for the cluster helper wires that go into the engine bay and so we got a long pigtail over here for that so you can run it, the boost, the temp, and the gear selector off of that pigtail. And just plug in right here. Boop. So, heck yeah, that cluster helper looks sweet. I mean, call them helper. And then I got my headlight relay pack on here. So this will do the new headlight switch. And then coming over here, let's lift the dash up. And then coming over here, we got all our column plugs. So you got the clock spring your ignition, the multi-switch, the tow haul button, and then your shift, your brake shift interlock. And then see, we got our fuse box mounted there. I got two brackets. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. But other than that, it's pretty much all done. I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt this sucker, box it back up and ship it back to the guy. So, hell yeah. Other than that, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So when I pull it off, I'll be able to tape this up more it's just you know i can't get the tape behind there right now so other than that guys you know uh you know i just like making little tips and tricks and showing projects that i do so hopefully you know if you build your own harness this is basically what mine look like um, this is how i do it i start from the passenger side and work my way to the driver's side so it, it starts easier and then gets more difficult so it's really not that hard if you just go wire by wire now there's hundreds of them so have fun with that all right guys there's your finished product basically got it pulled off the mock-up dash and uh we, we were able to get all the tape on there uh so this looks like a nice freeway system of wires basically 
call him helper look slick so heck yeah and uh that, that'll stay plugged in so basically he can just put this wiring onto his dash and you know it doesn't have to unplug anything um include the little hardware so he can mount it on his dash and then same with the fuse box i left my brackets on there with the hardware so he'll be able to mount that exactly away on his if he wants you know the only thing if he wants to unplug i mean he can unplug the fuse box but other than that that's pretty much it what's nice about it is, you know, we can bunch it up and we can fit in the box so i'll be able to ship it back to him so but uh other than that that pretty much wraps up this video um basically this guy built you know tried to build his own harness he wasn't happy with it and he said you know screw it you can do it <laughs> and he sent it to me so he sent me the old harness and the new harness uh and he already had the column helper and cluster helper so got those all squared away so um i think i charged this guy 600 bucks in labor to build all that so and he's also getting my little power distribution fuse box little setup i put behind the glove box and it goes to the batteries for his accessories so um it pretty much wraps up this so if you're curious and you want me to do this um these do take me a little while to make you know because i'm doing ten thousand other projects at once so um i do need the old harness and a new harness and i chop them up and i do my magic and make one that's basically what i do um now let's say you're driving the truck and you can't afford to have it down for a while because you know you take it to work and whatnot i can also track down an old donor harness with like i'm slowly collecting every year and in those years there's different ones you know and an xlt is not the same as a fully loaded king ranch you know every year is different and then you got to get all the models within that year so there's there's about 10 different harnesses for every year you know probably a dozen if you include the excursions so a dozen times what eight that's like ten thousand harnesses so I'm slowly collecting them one at a time so i can just have cores out and cores in so people can keep driving um so yeah uh the more you know so all right, well, guys, I uh, hope this helps you if you want to build your own. You know, I don't give away all my secrets, but I'll give, I'll give you some tips and tricks. So I'll catch you all later. Adios.